Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. God bless you. God bless you. Welcome to Midday Devotion with Jared Lott, myself, JDL Ministries. I welcome you to our Midday Devotion, and I want to share with you on today to get you through this day. God bless you for all of you that are joining. Bless you, um, uh, Missionary Brenda Parker. Thank you. Um, as I am doing this devotion, I ask that you all pray for my dad. Uh, my dad had a accident on this week um, where he suffered um, some injuries, a, um, a couple of fractures in his face, a uh, few stitches in his face uh, and his head. Uh, he was working in the yard and um, tree limb fell on him as he was uh, working on trimming a tree. Uh, he's well now. He's at home. He's resting. But I ask those of you that know the words of prayer to just call my dad's name out in prayer. And it should not be difficult for you to call his name out. Um, I share the name of my dad. Uh, uh, my dad named me after him. So uh, if you would pray for Deacon Jared Lott Jr., I would greatly appreciate it. Um, and and pray that the Lord continue to heal him and strengthen him um, as he recovers from his injuries. Let's start with a word of prayer on today. Father, we thank you for your grace, for your mercy, for your kindness. We thank you, dear God, for your love and for all the things you've done for us, seen and unseen, for every way that you've made, every door that you've opened, Lord, everybody that you've healed, every heart, that you have uh that you have comforted oh god for every mind that you have given peace to oh god we tell you thank you we bless and praise your holy name on today lord as we take this time in the middle of our day uh, no matter where we are in this part of the country in the country oh god be it east coast the midwest or the west oh god is this the middle of our day lord we just want to give you glory honor and praise we want to recognize you for who you are and thank God that you look on us and consider us enough that you continue to let your grace and your mercy abound in our lives. And Lord, as we go into your word on today, I ask you to open the ears of your people that they may hear. Lord, open the hearts of your people that they may receive. Lord, bless those that will hear this. Bless those that will share it. Bless those that will be benefited by it and will uh, live according to the word that we're sharing on today. We give your name, glory, honor, and praise. And Lord, as I pray, even now, Lord, I ask you to touch my dad, touch my father, oh God, continue to strengthen and heal his body in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you to touch every part of his body that is aching, that is sore, Lord, they, that he have experienced some trauma. Lord, I ask you to bless and touch and heal him even now. And Lord, we thank you in advance and give you all the glory and honor and praise for it all belongs to you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. I want to just thank you all for being a part of the JDL Ministries and, and what we have been doing. Um, we are moving forward. I want you to be on the lookout as um, our website is being uh, put together even now. And um, many things are going to come as we continue to move this ministry forward that God has blessed us to have. And thank God for all of you that are uh, a part that um, saw fit to join. Uh, I would ask that you would um, go out to the Facebook page and like the Facebook page, JDL Ministries. Like the, like the Facebook page, join the group so that you'll know when these devotions are being presented. Today, I just want to share with you what the Lord has given me. Um, from the topic of unleashing potential, unleashing potential. And it is, um, we're going to go in the book of Ephesians to the third chapter, verses 20 and 21. And we're going to speak to the topic of unleashing potential, unleashing potential. Uh, once again, you can find that in Ephesians 3 verses 20 and 21. And I'll read that for you. And it says, now unto him that is able 
to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto uh, him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Within. Amen. Very familiar passage of scripture. We quote it so often, Ephesians 3 and 20. Um, and we, we, we love to hang around that, that one little phrase, exceeding abundantly. And we've heard it um, said in many different ways. I've heard it said exceedingly abundantly, but I want to stay with the true wording on today, exceeding abundantly, exceeding abundantly as we look at unleashing potential. Uh, whether you believe it or not, everyone has potential. Um, everyone has a purpose. Everyone has a skill set. By definition, the word potential means having or showing the capacity to become or develop into something in the future. Um, similar words that we would use when we talk about potential is um, possible or perspective or probable, budding, um, likely. These are the words that we use or um, possibilities, promise, capability. These are the words that we use when we refer, refer to the word potential. And then if you look at the word unleash, and this is what we really, I really want to kind of get you to focus on today as you bring these two together, unleashing potential. Uh, the word unleash by definition means to suddenly let a strong force or emotion be felt or have an effect. To suddenly let a strong force or emotion be felt or have a strong effect. Um, I was blessed um, earlier in life to be a, a coach of young people. Um, I coached several different sports. I've coached um, soccer. I've coached basketball, um, both in the school and uh, recreation and AAU. As well, I have also coached um, football. And as a coach, when you are working with young people and you are you have them on the practice field, um, you're going through the drills, you're going through training. One of the things that you say as a coach to the player, to the parents, to those on your coaching staff, you say, if this player only could live up to their potential, if this player would reach their potential, if this player only knew the potential that they had, meaning that there is something better or something greater than where they are. They're at a place now where they may be good, but because they have the capacity or the potential to go further, they can become better. They can be even better than where they are. Um, I also had the privilege of being a teacher, um, a high school teacher teaching math in the high school. Um, and you would look at the students and as they were doing their classwork, as they were doing their homework, as they were uh, engaging when you were teaching the lesson, looking at their tests, listening to them um, work work through problems and talk through the, the problems that you assigned to them, you would see that this student has great potential. This student um, could be better than where they are if they only knew their potential, if they only understood what they were capable of. All too often, we limit ourselves because we don't know our potential. God looks at us and he sees the potential in us, but we limit ourselves because we don't know our potential. Our mind and our thoughts have limits. They have a capacity and we only we only 
reach or we only work towards what that capacity is. And so we limit ourselves to what we can do or who we can be or where we can go. And then there are times when we listen to other people. We listen to what they say about us. We listen to what they think about us. We listen to what they observe about us or how they may um, how they may uh, uh, speak of us. And they limit what we're capable of or who we are. And because they do that, it limits our potential. It has a cap. It has a ceiling on it because we have bought in to the critique that someone else has given us. We've bought into the review or the or the opinions of someone else. And because we've bought into it, because we've listened to it, we are limited. And so our potential only goes so far. Our potential is now hindered because of what other people have said and because we believe them. Um, when we begin to think about unleashing our potential, we have to think about the fact that we cannot think of ourselves um, as we think of ourselves, but we have to begin to think of ourselves as God thinks about us because God does not put limitations or capacities on us. We do that to ourselves. There's a story that I have heard several times about a grasshopper who that was put into a jar and that grasshopper was put into a jar and the lid was placed on the jar. And the grasshopper would jump as high as it possibly could. And it continued to hit the lid of that jar. And it continued to jump. And it jumped and jumped until it tired itself out, but became frustrated because no matter how often that grasshopper was jumping in that jar, it continued to hit the lid of that jar. And so it began to understand that there were limitations to where he could go. And then the lid was taken off of the jar and the grasshopper would jump only so high because he had become accustomed to the fact that there was a lid that limited how far he can go. The grasshopper still had the potential to get out of the jar if he would only jump beyond what his limitations had told him he could jump. If he had continued to jump high as he was before the jar was put on, he could find himself out of the jar. Many of us are like that grasshopper that's in that jar because we can only think to a certain limit, because we can only see to a certain distance, because we can only understand to a certain degree. We put limits on ourselves and our potential is never met because we have limited ourselves according to what we think and not live according to where God wants us to be. And so when you begin to think about unleashing your potential, you have to understand that God has greater in store for you, but you have to not begin to think, you have to begin to not think of yourself for yourself. You have to begin to think of yourself how God thinks of you. And so um, when we look at Ephesians 3, verse 20, and Paul says it so eloquently, now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly, watch this now, above all that we can ask or think. Your potential is not based upon how much you know. Your potential is not based upon where you live. Your potential is not based upon who you know. Your potential is not based upon the resources that are around you. Your potential is based upon the one who is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that you can think. You are limited as to what your thinking is, but God does not have limitations to his thinking. So if you can begin to think the way that God thinks, you may reach greater heights and deeper depths. You know, I've heard it said so many times before, and it makes so much sense that um, if you can dream a dream that you can accomplish without needing the help of God, then your dream is too small. If you can think a thing and you can accomplish it without needing God, then that thought is too small because God is waiting on you to come with him 
come to him with something greater that's above you, that's beyond you. Those things that you want to do that are beyond you, that you need God's help is the potential that you have that you don't reach because you limit yourself. I only want to uh, be an entrepreneur and open just one branch of my business. And you've limited yourself because within yourself, you can do that. But God may say, I want you to be able to open it up and franchise what you're doing, which is beyond your capability. You may say, well, I have a book within me and I'm only going to write the one book. But God said, maybe saying to you, I see you writing series of books, but you've limited yourself because you're not reaching your potential because you only can think of what you are capable of doing. You may be saying that I just want to be a senior ops, but God is saying, no, I have in my mind for you to be a CEO, but you've limited yourself because you can only see yourself being a senior manager. And God is saying, no, I have greater for you because he is the one that can do above and beyond what you can ask or think. My my, my pastor, my bishop, uh, Bishop Macklin always says, go as far as you can see. And when you get there, you will see further. That's unleashing your potential. That is, uh, that is letting that strong force or, or emotion be felt or to have an effect on your life. You have to go beyond what you're thinking. You have to go beyond what you see in order to unleash your potential. And so to finish that, watch what Paul says. He says, above all that we can ask or think, whatever you ask or whatever you think, God can do above that and beyond that. He can do exceeding abundantly, which means more than. He can do more than the abundant. We just say the exceeding and abundant and think that, okay, he's going to go, uh, he's going to exceed and he's going to do abundantly. No, abundant means a, a lot. Abundant means more than, but God is going to exceed the more than. He's going to exceed the lot. You don't have room for all that he has. That's why it says eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard because it's exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Let me calm down before I start to preach up in here, up in here. And so he says, Paul says, above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Here's the key, my brother and my sister, my saintly friends, as you, as you are joining me on this midday on today, here is the key that I want you to, to, to look at. It says, according to the power that worketh in us. If you don't have the power of God working in you, you don't get a chance to experience the exceeding abundantly. No, you don't get a chance to experience that. You exceed, you, you may experience abundance and you may, ex, you may experience above what you ask or think, but you don't get to experience the combination of exceeding abundantly above what you ask or think, if the power of God is not working in you, you have to get in him and let him work through you in order for you to get to the point that you are exceeding abundantly. When the power and the potential within you is unleashed, it's because it's the power that's working in you, allowing it to unleash. Until that time, you're like that grasshopper that's in that jar that only can jump but so high because there's a ceiling, there's a lid, there's a top that prevents you from going beyond the boundaries. Your capacity, your ability, your potential exceeds your natural capacity. It exceeds your natural potential. It exceeds what people think of you, what people see when they look at you. It exceeds that. It goes beyond that. Your potential, your possibility, your promise is greater than where you are right now. Because you're in a good place does not mean that that's all there's going to be. God has greater in store for you. I know you're looking and you're looking at this 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 live right now. You're looking at this devotion right now. You're listening to me and you're saying, but Elder Lot, you don't understand. I'm going through so much. I'm having so many problems. There's problems in my home. There's problems in my family. I'm not, I'm out of work right now because of the pandemic. Um, my money is funny and 
and and I don't have friends like that. Listen, let me tell you something, my brother and my sister. The enemy does not attack your present. He attacks your future. So what he's trying to do is prevent you from reaching your potential. If he can get you to give up right now, your potential will never be met. We look at the story of Job and we talk about, oh, the patience of Job. Oh, look at what Job went through. And I'm coming to an end. I'm coming to a close because I've been on here too long. This was supposed to be a short devotion. But we look at Job and we talk about the patience of Job and we look at what Job went through. But you don't, what you really have to understand that in order for Job to get to the end that he got to, in order for Job to experience the double for his trouble that we just love to preach, teach, and expound upon, you have to understand that the enemy was under the attack, attack Job because of his future, not because of his present. Because the enemy saw what was in Job and what God had in store for Job because the potential had not been unleashed. Job had only experienced a taste of what God was going to do for him when we look in the beginning of Job. But the end of Job is the unleashing of the potential. And if you want to have that double for your trouble, you have to understand that the enemy is coming after you, not because of your present, not because of where you are, but because of where you're going. And if he can get you to give up in the middle of the stream, if he can get you to stop in the middle of the race, if he can get you to quit while you're going through, you won't get a chance to experience the exceeding abundantly. Your potential will never be unleashed. Oh, my Jesus. I, I, I was not trying to preach up in here. I was not trying to preach, but I just feel this thing on today because somebody needs to hear and understand that God is getting ready to unleash the potential in you if as long as you let him work in you, the power work in you. And so I end with the 21st verse where Paul says, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. That world without end, it, it, it piggybacks off of the 20th verse where he says exceeding abundantly because it's infinite. There is no there is no beginning. There is no end. There is no way to measure the power that works in you when you get in him. And when you understand that your potential will be unleashed. I'm praying for you, my brother, and my sister, those of you that are watching this, those of you who are sharing this, those that receive this, I'm praying for you right now that God begins to unleash your potential, your spiritual potential, your natural potential, your potential in God. Just know that God has greater in store for you, but you're going to have to go through in order for you to experience the potential you're going to have to go through. And the enemy does not care about where you are right now. He's out to destroy your future. And if you can hold on just a little while longer, you're going to begin to see God begin to bless you in ways that you can't name, ways you can't number, ways you can't measure, because it's going to exceed the abundance. Oh, bless your name. I'm finished on today. I'm finished on today. Father, I ask you to touch your people even now that they begin to understand the potential that's within them and that they will allow it to be unleashed to a greater level, to the next step, to the next level, that they are greater than where they are presently, that where they are presently only is a taste of the things that you're getting ready to do, that the potential, the capacity, the possibility, the promise that you've made to them is greater than where they are right now. They experience some good, but there's some things that are better. There's some things that are greater than what they're experiencing right now. Do it for them now, even now in Jesus' name. And we thank you and we praise you and we glorify you. We give you the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God, thank God, and thank God. I ask that you please just go to the, to the Facebook page, JDL Ministries, like the page, share this video with someone, let someone else understand and know that they have great potential that God is getting ready to unleash in their life. I love you. God bless you. and look forward to seeing you again at another day.